Hi there, my name is Ron Pereira and I'd like to welcome you to the first video of the most requested course we've ever released here at Gemba Academy. Well specifically, this course is going to be focused on all things Kaizen. So no matter if you're interested in learning more about Kaizen events or suggestion systems or you simply want to know how Kaizen applies to you, you're in the right place. Now, in this first module, we're going to get things started by offering an overview of what Kaizen is and how it applies to anyone, no matter if you work in an office, produce widgets in a factory, or take care of patients in a hospital. And just to give you a little taste of what the Kaizen mindset's all about, you'll also get to witness Kaizen in action as we venture into my kitchen. All right, well, let's get things started by learning exactly what Kaizen is. Well, literally translated, the word Kaizen means to change for the better. Well, taking it a bit further, with Kaizen, there's actually a sense of breaking down the current process, removing the unnecessary parts, and putting it back together in an improved manner. But to be sure, Kaizen is not a revolutionary process where all the knowledge and experience of the past is thrown out. Rather, when we do Kaizen correctly, we take a look at the current process, break it apart, and put it back together again. As such, the result should be an improved process that fully utilizes all the experience and skill of the people involved. Well, Kaizen is also a cornerstone of the Lean Enterprise as it works together in harmony with other Lean tools and concepts such as standard work and Heijunka, or level loading. Now, in order to effectively practice Kaizen, we must first understand three key concepts we refer to as the three Gens, sometimes called the three Actuals. Well first, when we do Kaizen, we must go to the Genba, or Gemba as it's most commonly referred. The word Gemba literally means the actual place. In other words, it's the place the work is done. Now for some, the Gemba might be the factory floor, or a construction site, or the operating room in a hospital. To be sure, the chance of Kaizen success is much higher when we go into the Gemba instead of spending all of our time in a boardroom drawing on flip charts and whiteboards. Now in the same spirit, rather than looking at drawings or other forms of documentation, this helps if we look at the actual parts, which was what the word genbutsu means. So instead of looking at a flowchart as an example, we'd be better off if we spent the time walking and experiencing the process for ourselves. Finally, getting the facts doesn't mean a divorce from feelings and theories. Rather, it simply means we need to get facts that either prove or disprove our ideas in a non-emotional manner. Well, this is what the word genjutsu means. It helps us understand what's really happening. In other words, it helps us understand what words like rarely or always actually mean. Now, oftentimes, when we get the facts, we see that something else is causing the problem, or we realize that the problem may be bigger or smaller than we think it really is. But once our team is armed with the facts, it'll be a lot easier to convince people the changes we hope to implement. Now then, when we do Kaizen within a workplace, we often use an expression that states that we must earn the right to go into the kitchen. Now this means that we can't simply barge into someone's work area and start asking questions or changing things. And just like we wouldn't visit someone's home and go right into their kitchen without permission, when we do Kaizen, we need to earn the right by showing respect and developing trust first. Now, with this said, I'd now like to warmly welcome you into my kitchen in order to give you a little taste of what this Kaizen mindset is all about. Now, for this simulation, we're going to be studying a process my family, and I imagine many of your families, knows very well. And that process is emptying the dishwasher. Now then, let's take a look at the current, before Kaizen process. Notice that our operator, who, I might add, is extremely experienced unloading dishes, first fumbles around as she picks up the silverware. She then takes around six steps, which equates to around 12 feet in order to reach the drawer with the silverware tray. She then places the silverware into the tray as we see here. After this, she turns around and repeats the process until she's placed the last piece of silverware into the drawer. Now let's watch the rest of this process take place.
Now then, when the team analyzed this process, they learned that it took a total of 1 minute and 25 seconds to unload the silverware and that our operator took a total of 30 steps covering approximately 60 feet. This was then used as their before Kaizen baseline performance. Now with this data captured, it was time for our kitchen Kaizen team to make some improvements. Now the first thing the team focused on was how to reduce the trouble the operator experienced when picking up the silverware, as well as placing it into the drawer. Well after some discussion, the team decided to practice the straighten aspect of 5S. Specifically, they decided to change the way the dishwasher was loaded. Well, in the original process, the silverware loading operator simply placed the silverware anywhere in the holder since no one had ever asked them to do it in another way. Unfortunately, this only led to problems for the unloading operator. So, a small change was made whereby all the spoons were loaded beside each other, as were all the other forks and the knives. Now, this change didn't create any extra work for the loading team, but the unloading operator felt this change would definitely help her. The next problem the team focused on was the amount of walking the operator was forced to do. Well, the first idea the team came up with was to simply move the silverware tray to a closer drawer. This would immediately reduce the amount of walking required by more than half. Additionally, one of the younger Kaizen team members came up with an additional idea no one else had thought of. How do we just take the tray and put it over there? What do you mean? Well, the of. Her idea was to simply pick the holder up, carry it to the drawer, and then unload the silverware instead of taking separate trips back and forth. Now the other Kaizen team members were excited to give this a try, which was exactly what they did next. Now, as you see here, the operator now picks up the silverware holder, carries it a few feet to the drawer, and commences to unload the silverware as we see here. Obviously, nearly all the walking has been eliminated and while there's still an opportunity to improve the handling of the silverware, this new process is much better. In fact, this new process using the same amount of silverware only took 38 seconds and the total distance walk was less than 6 feet. Well, when we compare the metrics, we see that the total time to unload the silverware went from 1 minute and 25 seconds down to 38 seconds, an improvement of 47 seconds. And the total distance walk per day was reduced by 54 feet or 3.72 miles per year. So, in just a short time, our kitchen Kaizen team has been able to radically reduce the time it takes to unload silverware from a dishwasher. Additionally, the team is now excited to continue making improvements, which their live-in lean consultant is very happy to hear. Now, while I'm pretty sure most of the people watching this video don't unload dishes for a living, I bet with some critical thinking, you'll be able to identify many areas within your business where this type of Kaizen mindset will lead to big improvements. And to be clear, the improvements we make through Kaizen don't have to be cycle time related like we saw in this example. Instead, we might focus on improving other metrics like on-time delivery, defects, or variability within the process. To be sure, no matter the problem, the Kaizen mindset can help. Alright, well, throughout the rest of this course, we're going to cover many aspects of Kaizen, including the Kaizen event. But before then, if you haven't already done so, I'd like to encourage you to watch the Kaizen video from our Lean Lingo Explain course as Brad Schmidt, who happens to be fluent in Japanese, breaks down the Japanese characters from this mysterious word. Okay, well, in the next video of this Kaizen course, we're going to continue the journey as we begin to learn more about the powerful Kaizen event. So, we'll speak to you soon.